All right, hello everyone. As we jump right into this draft, Tiny Dancers versus Beef Boys A East action here uh, on the Nexus Gaming series. Uh, Tiny Dancers trying to salvage their season right now, currently on track to miss playoffs as they find themselves outside of the top eight. Only four points to their name. Um, however, certainly a team capable of turning it on and finding some momentum here. Uh, Beef Boys, on the other hand, been a bit inconsistent, but definitely have some good wins to their name. Uh, take a look at who Beefy Boys has played. They have, a, they have a win over Gilly Shark, who's been having a really good season. They have a win over THC. They also lost to Tricky Gooses and Roomba Rotations. So, you know, they, they arguably beat the two better teams and lost to the two worst teams there. But nonetheless, uh, are a good team. Toronto going to be banned out here on Alterac Pass. Toronto hasn't really seen a lot of play, so that absolutely has to be a target ban. Um, taking a look quickly at the stats uh, for Toronto. Uh, which are taking a second to load in here. Uh, Taronda, well, 61% win weight. That's pretty good, but only an 8% popularity. Uh, and oh, and I, I I, did look. She, A lot of teams have been playing her more at the higher levels, but D.Va, of course, getting banned uh, since her rework, incredibly strong. Samuro getting banned out. I quite like Samuro on this map because of the value that stalling the objective and doing macro can get. Uh, so I think there's a good ban. Anna going to get banned out, uh, denying Beef Boys that healer. Uh, Anna, a very good enabler of a mage right now. And especially with Deckard falling off, I should note Deckard is a sub 40% win rate hero at the moment. Uh, Deckard is not doing well. I don't know if the stats that I have loaded in are updated to reflect this. Um, actually, I, I think they very much aren't, if I'm honest. Uh, let's see. No, they, they are updated. As we see, the Hanzo pick first. There's the Garrosh. The very, very strong tank at the moment. Yeah, Deckard, uh, my stats say 44%, but when I looked in stats of the storm, he was sub 40. Uh, he's really fallen off with that ruby nerf. He's struggling right now. Uh, but you see Garrosh Rainer, two pretty strong picks. Uh, Tiny Dancers has always liked to do a bit of double tank. I haven't seen if they've been doing that again this season, but I do like grabbing a Falstad here. Uh, getting that macro play potential, but also... The Faustat has that mighty gust in case Garrosh does get a good engage. So I quite like that pickup here. Uh, you got two damage dealers, Faustad and Hanzo. I don't think you see a May solo front line, so I, I think you'll see at least a, a bruisey offlaner. Deathwing going to get banned out. Um, Deathwing... Kind of, you know, got got some changes. I don't know how good they make Deathwing, but it is something that uh, it's played a bit. It's certainly a, a good counter to the Garrosh that relies a lot on stepping up and doing CC. The uh, Deathwing can make it hard for the Garrosh to step up. Hard to get onto the Squishy simply because of its large uh, body mass. It's hard to get around. What I'm trying to say is Deathwing got a thick booty, though. Chromie banned out. Chromie very strong on this map for the stall potential. On the objective can stall it out very reliably that said uh, Li Ming can also do the same and there it is I was about to say uh, I do know fishing queen quite likes the Ming play and so not at all surprised to see that grab Anduin is actually a good counter to Garrosh but a very very good partner with the Garrosh Garrosh has no escape Anduin can give him one. Garrosh needs someone with CC to follow up reliably. Anduin's root is very easy to hit on whoever Garrosh throws. I remember when Anduin first came out and people were like, his root is so hard to hit. And I still don't know what planet those people are living on. It is far harder to hit a Malfurion root than it is to hit an Anduin root. But that said, I like the Malfurion here into this poke damage. 
If Li Ming starts getting resets, however, uh, it could really punish the Malfurion's lack of burst healing. Uh, but that said, I think, especially with Deckard falling off, uh, Malfurion really has the best root of any healer and can very much follow up off the May combo with that. Uh, and we see a Gazlo. So Gazlo uh, got some buffs, and from what I have been told, those buffs were too much. And Gazlo's actually incredibly OP right now. That is what I've heard. Uh, I do not know if that's true. I haven't really been playing the game much uh, the last week or so since the change. Um, okay, yeah, no, he's a 60% win rate. What the fuck? Holy shit. What? Okay, so I just looked it up. Uh, I just looked it up, and, um, Gaslow is a 60% win rate on Hero's Profile right now. Jesus. They are so bad at balancing this game. Oh my god. <sighs> Devo, by the way, is still a 56% win rate. Oh well. We only have another month to wait for the next balance patch. All right. Let me go ahead and introduce the teams. On the left, it is Tiny Dancer. We're going to have Feldroth on Raynor, Liddell on that Gazlo, Silver going to be on Garrosh, Materium on Anduin, and Fishing Queen on Li Ming. It is Tiny Dancers, and they are desperate for a win. On the other side, Beef Boys looking to find some consistency. You got Durka Dirk. On Malfurion, Dazed on Sonya, Tribulation on May, Root Beer Guy on the Faustad, and Smort Killer on the Hanzo. Take a look at the level one talents. My cursor guides are on. I will turn them off here uh, as soon as this opening rush is done. As everyone likes to watch the opening rush. Okay, we have a second. Like they were never there. All right. Malfurion is going into the Rejuvenation. That is my preferred talent right now. It makes it so Malfurion doesn't ever have to worry about healing himself. He always has pretty much passive healing. Uh, very beneficial. It also works extremely well with his 13 movement speed, as well as his uh, 16 Moonlit Harmony, if you want it. Faust that Rainer brawling in the bottom. May potentially looking for a bad rotation. Sonya Gaz in the top. Gaz, probably a pretty good solo laner right now. Um, although, admittedly, I'm not sure. Uh, we already see Malfurion and Hanzo on their camp. They don't have the best burn, especially this early in the game. Uh, Hanzo very dependent on his talents to get PvE damage. But that said, uh, Raynor did go Exterminator. Will be a, a little faster. They should probably finish around the same time. Uh, meanwhile, everyone's soaking the lanes otherwise. Nobody really taken any risks so far. Tribulation. Poking into silver a bit. Looks like a little bit earlier in the lane on the side of Beef Boys, but you almost prefer that if you're on the side of Tiny Dancers to have the your camp come out a little bit later so it potentially neutralizes close to your side. That said, because the minion's already at play, the neutral point is very much under the side of Beef Boys. That's going to force a fourth person, now a fifth person, to come in. Uh, there's a stun on the Garrosh. Root follow-up. Five people for Tiny Dancers right now here in the mid, and they really didn't get any value despite that, as uh, two of the camp minions only just now being finished. Gazlo rotating back top to D-push. Rainer doing the same to the bottom. Uh, still have a slight XP lead on the side of Tiny Dancers. We'll see if that holds. Potential flank coming down. Root Beer Guy actually taking a bit of damage here. Maybe he could have used a quick heal from Malfurion. It's going to be a bottom... Uh, bottom tribute phase. My nickname is Tiny Dancer. Do in cheer for them. I assume you mean I cheer for them? And sure, you can. Cheer your heart out, Tony Danza. Hold me closer, Tony Danza. Keep our prison camp from being captured 
and get our soldiers out of the horde. Camp being cleared by both teams. Neither, neither team uh, really committing to the objective yet. It is available. Gaz thought about rotating down, but comes back up to get the soap. Both teams at close to seven. Gaz might as well stay top now and get that next wave. Uh, since nobody's really rushed down. But with their camp in the lane, they want to push with five again. Uh, this is something we saw them do earlier, albeit not to much effect. Uh, and so the the sea giants go under towers. They'll do some damage, but, you know, they're, they're getting hit by the towers without any minions. They're going to drop quick. And Tiny Dancers didn't send anyone down to pressure the point while that camp was being cleared. Into the fray has to be used to prevent Anduin from getting singled out. But Tiny Dancers looking like they want to soak, looking like they really want to focus on this level 10. Uh, look for Gravo Bomb combos. They can do uh, quite a tiddly bit of damage uh, post level 10. But now it looks like uh, Beef Boy is just kind of tired of playing around. They want to go in for this. Uh, May is currently in the mid, though. And it looks like Sonya, they're going to actually send Faustad top. And that gives a slight advantage over to Beef Boys as Faustad uh, has the fly. Gaslow does not. That said, Gaslow has pretty quick wave clear. Killing all but one minion there uh, rather, rather quickly. Neither team really committing to an objective yet. We saw a brief attempt by Beef Boys, but otherwise it looks like both teams committed to finding 10 and now possibly getting camps once again. At least on the side of Tiny Dancers. Can't be closer, Tiny Dancer. Actually, I have trouble singing. I had some breathing problems yesterday, which was a bit of a concern, so bear with me. I also don't know the rest of the words to that song. I just know Hold Me Closer, Tiny Dancer. Uh, both teams get their camp into lane, however. So this is the third camp in the lane. No channel progress yet. As this objective just continues to stall here. And uh, Garrosh went for Smart Killer there. Smart Killer getting chased down by Ming, but Ming not able to finish off that kill. Missing the skill shot, missing the calamity. So, chance for the first blood of the game didn't happen. Level 10's now here for both teams. Uh, slightly earlier for Beef Boys, we got Twilight Dream, Mighty Gush, Dragon's Arrow, Snowball, and Wrath of Berserker. On the other side, we have Hyperion, Light Bomb, uh, Gravo Bomb, Warlord's Challenge, and Disintegrate. And uh, might get that combo right here on the Root Bear guy. Avalanche used... To say Faustad, who also used Mighty Gust there. See, so a trade Gravo Bomb for the two big disengages. That means if Garrosh can get in, he has the potential to have a really big Warlord's Challenge. That said, Tiny Dancer's having to walk away to tap, only just now rotating in. May trying to buy space. Into the fray has been used. No channel progress yet. Garrosh throws Sonya away. Sonya trying to be disruptive. Here comes the Hyperions. They do get some channel progress. It is continuing to go as they poke this out fairly well. They only find themselves, though, about five seconds for all of that. And this game might take a bit for us to get that first objective. Is Hey, look, the camps are up. <coughs> it says I'm streaming Divinity Original Sin. That is not updating my category correctly. That is strange. Thank you for the update. Uh, I updated that before I started streaming. But apparently it reverted back. All right. Good ice block there by May. Now uh, Sonya moving it on the back line, looking for the light bomb. There's the taunt synchronizing up with that. Sonya goes down, but a big Twilight Dream. Might enable the turnaround. No, Liddell does get pulled out. 
by the now buff Leap of Faith. Big Avalanche hits three. It's going to disengage for now. Can they get onto the Raider? They do with the Dragon's Arrow finish. Liddell's going to have to back up, so they managed to take that situation down one. Good Avalanche to isolate the Raider. Quick turnaround, and Feldroff gets taken out by a Dragon's Arrow snipe. <coughs> Pardon me. So now, both teams posturing up again, but now there's about a little bit more than half a level lead in favor of Beef Boys. The Tiny Dancers is losing this race to 13 now. They need to start making a decision. Keep in mind, they almost got the cap there. Uh, they were really close. 2.9 left. No, I'm not uh, I'm not streaming uh, Divinity tonight. I've been trying. I, I realized I don't like streaming it. Because uh, I thought the game would be a lot faster paced. And it's rather slow paced. Which I actually don't mind. But it kind of makes it miserable to stream. Because uh, I feel like I have to react to everything. When I'm just trying to enjoy the story. When it's very, very, very story focused. Alright. Now, Beef Boy's coming in. They are pushing up here into the fray used to get Gazlo out. Uh, Sonya getting stunned out there. They're trying to stall this channel as long as they can. Uh, Hyperion comes out, though, to make sure it can't happen. And now the ice block. Oh, Warlord's challenge was used while the ice block was up. Big three-man avalanche. But that said, the health bar is starting to drop here. Malfurion having a hard time keeping up. Twilight Dreams used only hit onto the Rainer. But yeah, gotta be a bit patient with that Warlord's Challenge. Ice Block does grant Unstoppable. Still, though, no channel progress, despite the 13 advantage on the side of Beat Boys. And that opportunity is now closed with 13 being picked up by Tiny Dancers. That's a huge level uh, for the Anduin, getting that extra move speed. Uh, whatever talent he takes, it's going to give him more move speed. I am still personally a fan of uh, the W talent at 13. For the CDR it gives. I think CDR on Anduin W is huge. But that said now. Um, ooh, Raynor has to step up very aggressively for that channel. Now going to get stunned out here. Gazlo is not here to tank. Looking for the Gravo Bomb. No, the Ancient Spear used to get away. And Sonya finds the kill with the help of Hanzo. Onto the Raynor. And that should be... The objective heading over to Beef Boys. Here we are. 11-13 into the game. Two kills to one. When we might finally see the first objective. 11 seconds. Into the fray used. I think they have to give this. I think they have to walk away. And they do. So. First objective heading over. In favor of Beef Boys. Uh, Gazlo did manage to get some soak bot, got some push in. The minions should be able to finish that tower. Uh, no, sorry, that wasn't the tower. That was the gate health bar. So they get the gate down. Uh, but now, 1-3-1 one, one split on the side of Tiny Dancers. Looks like they're going to match that with a 1-3-1 one, one on the side of Beef Boys. Should say Heroes of the Storm now, right? Right now, good opportunity for Beef Boys to push in. Yeah, I start playing Divinity Original Sin, and I like it, but it's just like I did like three bits of combat that were really fun, and I spent the last like three hours just walking around this town doing RPG shit. And like, I love doing RPG shit. RPG shit is fun, but it's just not good for streaming. Like, what am I going to do? Read the text boxes? No, thank you. Uh, ooh, Gazlo might get caught out here. No, looks like he'll be all right. Root comes in. They don't get this fort, so despite a, a pretty late first objective, no forts have gone down from it. They do have a Wrath of the Berserker Sonya, so boss is a legit threat here. Uh, 3v3 in the bottom. Raynor starting to work on the boss here. 
Anduin up here as well, and Falstad didn't check, so this boss is gonna get taken. Albeit not extraordinarily quickly, it can very much be done. On the other side, uh, there's a flip onto May. She gets stunned. Warlord's challenge. They secure the kill onto the May. The boss is at about half health, but Fishing Queen very low. Nowhere to tap. I don't think they're going to be able to engage this, but they have at least bought time to grab the boss in the top lane and uh, maybe help push with it a bit. That said, they are going to need to defend this bottom. This bottom fort is forfeit. I think uh, Gaz or Garrosh maybe should have walked away sooner. That Gravo Bomb is not going to get it done. Rainer pushing the mid, boss pushing the top. 16's here for both teams. I'm curious what now. Malfurion did not take the talent, I take it 15. So I've, I've become a fan of Moonlit Harmony. He's going with Nature's Balance. Uh, Nature's Balance makes it easier to hit multi moon fires, but it, um, it's more sustained heal focus. Whereas Moonlit Harmony, because you can keep uh, four, four regrowths up at any time, it's effectively a 60% bonus on every Moonfire hit. Um, and I find that quite nice. I find it gives a little bit more burst. I think both talents are great. I think his other 16 talent is hilariously dog shit in comparison. Ooh, looking for the Gaz. Did not get the boop in the right direction, though. So Gaz is going to be able to defend this. We do have the camps available. So right now, fort for fort, fort in top lane, fort in bot lane. Got to think with the catapult pressure, that definitely is going to... Or not catapult, but the super minion pressure. Uh, that definitely will favor the members of Beef Boys as Tiny Dancers having to stay far away from their vulnerable lane. Looking for the Sonya, though. Here comes the Light Bomb. There's the Warlord's Challenge. They get the big kill. Hanzo Arrow hits four. Now Garrosh trying to walk away. Had the Unstoppable to nullify out. Ooh, good combo from Gaslo onto the May. Buying time for Anduin to heal. It was a really good disengage there by Tiny Dancers after they secured that kill, but now they need to pressure in and look to do something quickly. Ice block not available for May, and I think she's going to go down. She is. And Tiny Dancer's now with a chance to channel. Root Beer Guy going to get one interrupt, but now having to back up with two dead. One thing to note, though, is the Super Minion does go under towers. So unlike a Catapult, it can be ignored at a price. A Catapult, on the other hand, if it has a good Minion Wave will not die for a long time and can do a ton of damage. Um, eventually, it'll get counter-pushed by minions, but until then, it just it wreaks havoc. So you just can't ignore a catapult like you can these super minions. Falstad did go in with a bribe, steal this uh, camp from Tiny Dancers. Let's take a look at how Falstad is doing uh, on his stacks. Currently up to 40% bonus damage. That Hey, that's pretty good. But here comes the second objective wave. Coming in for Tiny Dancers. And they're going to put a big effort uh, committing to mid here. We want to get this wall down quickly. Uh, there's the separation on the May. Uses the Unstoppable. There's the Warlord's Challenge. She blows the Ice Block, and the Mighty Gust and Dragon's Arrow are used to get May out. That's a lot of Heroics down. A lot of Heroics used by both teams, though, as the Light Bomb is out as well. They don't get the Mid Fort. They are going to get this Bottom Fort, and it looks like they might try to push up here into the bottom. No, now it looks like they're going to actually choose to rotate Mid and try to take all three Forts off the map. Try to use that passive XP to reach 20 at about the same time, even though currently finding themselves down on Soak. Uh, JK, they're going for boss, I guess? Or did, I think that's where they're going. Falstad currently in the bot lane. Kind of surprised they didn't try to take this fort. 
It's a pretty telegraphed boss play. And by the way, boss is not up for another 18 seconds. Um, so I think a little bit of a macro misplay there from Tiny Dancers. Uh, had the opportunity, I think, to do something on the map. Didn't end up getting it. Now they're going to take their siege camp. But this is going to, uh, since Beef Boy is up here with 20, they're now going to go ahead and take this boss and take it off the map. Or so they'll try. Garrosh might get there in time. But they don't have 20. And this is not a fight Tiny Dancers wants without level 20. The boss has been captured. 20 just now kicking over. But Tiny Dancers not getting the boss there. And they they really gave up an opportunity to push either bot lane or mid. Uh, in order to, to rotate to that boss. Find it wasn't available. And then ultimately just take their fire bats and leave. Um, Hanzo rotates down to the bottom. Starts checking this bottom boss. Gonna try to kite it for the time being while Sonya rotates down. Mid fort has gone down though. These fire bats do a lot of damage. And I, I, I get this a question a bit. Why do I call these fire bats? They are coded identically to fire bats. The only difference is there's three rather than two of them. And they have a different skin. But they are coded as fire bats. They do the same damage. They do the same armor reduction, etc. Uh, once again, the focus on to May. Ice block burns through. Ice block comes up once again, but May does not get out despite all of that. And that is May going down once again. It feels like once you get to level 20, May just has a hard time with all the CC that becomes available. Now with the camps up. Uh, they're going to leave Rainer to clear this boss, and they're going to push up with May down and try to uh, try to get this channel, and they do. Now Garrosh going to position up by the team from space. Actually mounting in the bush here. Common rule on Garrosh, if you can mount, you should. Uh, he's, he's substantially more dangerous mounted than he is on foot. More so than other tanks, that is absolutely true. How fast he's able to close the distance is directly connected to uh, how effective he's going to be. That's why you'll see things like Lucio or Zarya uh, giving Garrosh speed a lot. So, Tiny Dancers, they do get uh, the objective, but in the meantime, they've lost mid fort and top fort. So, currently, things are even Stevens. Uh, upgraded Gravo Bomb coming out from Gazlo, though. Looks like Gaz should uh, rotate with the rest of the team. Which lane are they going to pick? Looks like they're maybe looking to catch someone out on a bad rotation, but no such luck. So, now they'll turn their attention, pushing towards this bottom. Or are they going to go for mid? Kind of wasting a bit of time here in my mind. Uh, I think they want to be a bit more assertive about what they want to do. Now they focus the bottom. Here comes Hyperion. Avalanche, Dragon's Arrow comes out. That's a lot of heroics to use just to buy space to clear objectives. Here comes Falstad looking for the Fly Gust. Finds Li Ming. Li Ming able to get out with the self unstoppable. Now Falstad finding himself on the wrong side, but the Light Bomb self cast not able to get on top of Falstad. And they do lose the keep there. And now Falstad just has nowhere to go. Falstad goes down. The top camp is still alive. This is an opportunity for, uh, Tiny Dancers to run mid and clear that keep. They do clear it. Now they're going to go ahead and take this camp. Falstad down for 45. Do they try to push in top as well? They have the Li Ming. They have the Gazlo. If they don't damage enemy heroes, they can absolutely stand under towers uh, with those Gazlo turrets. But it looks like they're going to back up. They're going to play this safe. They have their own siege camp up. Top boss up in 50. So Falstad will be more than alive by then. Kind of a passive play here from Tiny Dancers. They at least want to keep the lanes pushed in. Level 22 to 22. 
So any kills now just have a, a forever death timer. Tense situation. Tiny Dancer's really desperate for a win. If they can find a domination victory here, they'll move up into the echelon that Beef Boy's in. A lot of teams at like eight to six points in A East right now. Would certainly help their playoff prospects dramatically. A East just such a competitive division. Meanwhile, hovering around this boss. Are they going to take this uh, Gazlo? Oh, Anduin is rotating way out. I they think they could have gone. Oh, no, Anduin. Don't, don't check that. No. Oh, Anduin. That's what you get when you face check bushes. Oh, 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 oh. And uh, Garrosh goes down as well. And unfortunately, it just, I, I felt it coming. And uh, Anduin was the first looking at the boss. That said, I mean, there is there is a camp pushing onto the core right now with two ultra minions. And it's doing a lot of damage. This is not a... This is not a safe situation here with so little armor on the uh, core, but it should survive for the time being. Tiny Dancers are going to go for this boss bot to produce some counter pressure, something to at least pressure the boss while they go for the defense. They are going to be able to do that. Uh, Hanzo is starting to work his way back. Falstad presumably could fly in. What did Falstad take at 20? Did not go Epic Mount, but still. Uh, Garrosh will be up in 8. Boss is going to at least get wall, but not much else. A lot of burn here. On the other side, this boss is moving straight onto core, but remember the core on this map does regenerate, so this isn't uh, an endgame situation. As uh, even though the core is going to take a fair amount of damage, all of that will be healed up before it's relevant. Uh, mid camp going to get cleaned up by tiny dancers. They're going to want to address this top lane as well, which is fairly pushed in. Uh, but need to be careful there, uh, especially around these bushes. As we saw there just a second ago. Great patience, by the way, from Beef Boys. There are some opportunities where, uh, you know, a lot of teams would have tried to have taken the Gazlo there. Or they would have gone out for the Anduin rather than waiting for the Anduin. Instead, they showed good patience. And they got the kill as a result. Using the false sense of urgency that they might be using boss to their advantage. You're getting boss to their advantage. Li Ming gets a nice tasty ball into Sonya's face. Ooh, Hanzo. Hanzo liking some balls. There's the Dragon's Arrow going for the uh, Garrosh. May tries to move into the back, finds an avalanche onto Raynor. Here comes the Mighty Gust putting Fishing Queen right back in. There's the Twilight Dream. That's going to secure one kill. And Liddell is going to drop before the Light Bomb can even go off. Two more kills. Beef Boy's looking for three. And that might be enough for them to end the game as they chase down this Garrosh. Going to now go for top keep and, and likely to end. Uh, Raynor going to go bot, try to push in, try to finish. This boss has actually taken some damage. Might be who Falstad to back up as this boss is not going to regen and it has 20 less armor. Is anyone backing? They are not. Rainer is here. It's just now starting to regen. 15k. I don't think the Rainer can outrace that, but he does have the armor advantage. Does he have Hyperion? He does not. So actually, yeah. It's it's still close, but it is going to be uh, ultimately Beef Boys winning this. But a, a, a lot closer than I think Beef Boys was comfortable with. A good, good decision there, honestly, by Tiny Dancers to send what little they had left bottom just to try to make something happen. I think if that boss didn't get that half second of health regen, that might have worked out. Feldroth making a good decision. Uh, but still, it is going to be Beef Boys winning game number one in this series.
And uh, Tiny Dancer is going to need to recoup here. As that was a very close game. But it is still a loss all the same. When it comes to the standings, that's all that's going to matter. Uh, so we're going to take a brief break while we get set up uh, for game number two between Beef Boys and Tiny Dancers. Uh, Beef Boys up 1-0. We'll be right back, everyone. Stay tuned, and thank you for watching. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, oops. There we go. Uh, DB Smiley here bringing you this second matchup uh, between Tiny Dancers and Beef Boys. Uh, very, very close game one. Looks like Tiny Dancers had their opportunity. Beef Boys had to not lose a fight, and they didn't, and end up winning the game. Although it was a core race that was rather close, all things considered. Um, looks like we're getting the readies in. Um as we get set up here. It's going to be Infernal Shrines, as chosen once again by Tiny Dancers. Uh, choosing to stick with map pick. Sticking with these large objective-focused maps as we head into the draft between these two teams. Beef Boys get the pick first once again. Uh, do we see any target bans? I will say this. The Gazlo... Did not look overly powerful there. Um, for whatever it's worth. The Gazlo did not look extremely strong. Taronda? Once again, banning that out from Materium. Diva going to be a banned out again. Are we going to see same bans as last time? Looks like we are currently heading in that direction. Is Chromie banned out this time? Actually, I think that was banned out last time. Yeah, it was. Anna is going to get denied. Same bans as last time. Tend to think that favors the team that won the last match, but not necessarily. They did first pick Hanzo. This time they're going to go with the Dibbles. Uh, Dibbles definitely rising back in the popularity numbers this season. Uh, Diablo has seen a, a market increase over last season. Up to 52% popularity. Uh, not overly dominant in win rate, but still a, a strong hero to combo off of. Meanwhile, Johanna... Johanna has uh, dropped off quite a bit. Uh, from last season. Last season was like 90% popular. She's still 62, but only a 46% win rate. Not particularly good. Uh, Tychus, however, grabbed. Uh, does bring a lot to deal with that Diablo's big H people. With every death comes honor. It is time. There's the Hanzo once again, breaking the Zul out. So, not wanting to change up the Hanzo. I thought it was played extremely well by Smart Killer in the last game, so... Gonna stick with that. The Zul is an interesting choice. Doesn't really pair amazingly well with the Diablo. Um, just because Diablo wants to kind of dive, and Zul doesn't have mobility to really easily move in with the Diablo. But that said, brings a ton of wave clear, a ton of shrine control, and really dissuades uh, melee being picked up by Tiny Dancers. Anduin gonna get denied. Uh... Materium played it in the last map. Uh, not intending to play it this time and not wanting to go against it. 
What is the next pickup from Beef Boy or next band from Beef Boys? They deny Samuro. Was banned out last time as well. So I believe that's the same bands from Beef Boys. Only one change on the bands from Tiny Dancers. We have a Brightwing picked up against the Diablo and a Kael'thas. So the Brightwing is designed to punish the Diablo when he dives the, the Polymorph. Is the goal is to polymorph before Diablo can do the flip. And it's, it's very much win harder, lose harder in this respect. If you're able to do that, you are going to really punish the Diablo, especially with the Tychus, with the Gravity Lapse follow-up, etc. But if you don't, Brightwing does not have the burst heals to save the individual. She doesn't have the cleanse. She has a removal, but not a cleanse. So it can very be win harder, lose harder. Lucio Mephisto coming out. So the Lucio is interesting. It gives move speed. There's the sound barrier to try to punish that blow up combo. Keep in mind that Tychus Minigun, while it does uh, do percent damage, it does not benefit from polymorph armor reduction. Time the answer is going back to their roots here with the double tank. They're going to get the Joe and the Garrosh here. So a little back to their roots. Something that we've seen them do in the past. Uh, you know, it, it's going to come down to how well they're able to separate out targets and punish. Um, there's a lot of counter-engage. I mean, if they try to separate someone out... They're going to have to be cognizant of that Mephisto coming in and doing a ton of damage if they try to stack up too much. So. It will be an interesting, uh, interesting game. But we are going to move into it right now. Let's go ahead and introduce the teams once again. Uh, on the left side... Down 0-1, desperately looking for wins here, trying to keep their playoff hopes going. It is Tiny Dancers. We're going to have Feldroth on Tychus, Liddell on Joanna, Silver, 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 going to be on Garrosh, Materium on Brightwing, and Fishing Queen on Kael'thas. And on the right side, looking to close out the domination, it is Beef Boys, Dirk a Dirk. He's going to be on Lucio, Root Beer Guy, Mephisto, Dazed on the Zul, Smort Killer on Hanzo. And Diablo will be played by Tribulation. Level 1 Talents. It is Soul Shield from Diablo. Uh, that will certainly help with the Kael'thas damage. Will not do Lickety Split against Tychus. Interesting. So I actually don't know how to build Lucia these days. Smooth root move. Okay. So going with self-sustain, uh, Garrosh finds a bush, checks it. They do get uh, some good separation out there onto Diablo, and that is their combo. And the nice thing about that is because they have the Tychus, they are not only okay with doing that combo into Diablo, they almost prefer to, especially since Lucio really takes a long time to heal that big HP pull up. Up, Joe rotating down. She's doing a bit of double soak, trying to keep Tiny Dancers ahead in rotations. Uh, Tiny Dancers now trying to rotate down to catch the soak. Are they maybe going to be able to catch Diablo again? Diablo is going to get thrown. There's the stun, Polymorph, and the damage comes out. And that is exactly what you want if you are on Tiny Dancers. Pitch perfect execution of that combo. And they are making it work very well for them early in this game. I'm actually very interested to see this Lucio build because I don't really... It's it's weird. I know he's good. I know he's a good healer. I just don't really play Lucio. I used to a lot. I played him a ton. But, I don't know. I just can't bring myself to play him. It's like too many fun healers in the game right now. And Lucio is just boring as shit.
Bot camp getting cleaned up here by Beef Boy. Find themselves down about a third of a level. Uh, mid camps currently pushing against each other. Kelfoss came down to get this bot soak, not wanting to miss it. Uh, should give a 4v3 here in the mid. Although, that said, uh, there's the polymorph. Damage comes in. Tychus not really able to do much with the minigun into Smort Killer, as, as you would expect. Uh, what with Smort Killer not really having a lot of HP. Uh, it is in the rhythm coming out from uh, Tychus, so keep an eye on that. Brightwing actually interesting talent at 4. Magic Spit, so wanting to keep that cleanse off cooldown. Into that Zul, it makes sense. That said, remember, it is not a true cleanse. There is no... Uh, there's no unstoppable. It is just a removal. But once again, Diablo getting caught out on the point. He takes so much damage. Can they get the finish? Tychus, with the help of that living bomb, does in fact do so. And that should enable a head start onto the point for Tiny Dancers. Mephisto, however, is going to try to be annoying. But they throw in Zul. There's the root onto Tychus. And that's going to be enough to make sure Zul can get away. Good root decision there. Polymorph didn't seem to be available. But that said, 27-3. Diablo not even rotating down, going straight to top lane. Well, now maybe calling the audible. Going to come mid, uh, but it's 36-3. They are absolutely going to lose this point. Arcane Punisher in the lane for Tiny Dancers. As they uh, start off strong here in game number two. The, translate those two kills well into a lot of early value. They're keeping up their soak very effectively. Brightwing rotating away, knowing that she can Z back. Uh, took the Z reduction uh, at level one to have more global mobility. But that said, uh, they don't even manage to fully get the wall here in bot lane. Bit of a lost opportunity. Brightwing hanging back so that way she can Z if needed. Uh, if Brightwing starts to Z, expect Zul to throw a root to try to interrupt it. Right now, I like what I'm seeing out of Beef Boys. They're not really doing anything aggressive. They recognize kind of that, you know, Tiny Dancers really wants to get kills. Uh, they also recognize that, quite frankly, Zul can out-rotate Joanna if needed. Uh, but that said, uh, Tiny Dancers really wants this bottom camp, and they are going to take it. So bottom camp going to be taken by Tiny Dancers, mid right camp taken by Beef Boys. Might see a fight over mid left camp. Joe getting rooted by the Zul here. Both teams grabbing a camp. There is the Polymorph combo on the Diablo once again. Tribulation just taking so much damage in this game. That Soul Shield is helping. It might be the difference between Diablo being alive or dead in these situations. But at the moment, it is close. And if Diablo has to keep backing every time... Ooh, it might be jo uh, Zul this time. Is he going to go down? He is. That auto attack in, from Garrosh with the living bomb enough to secure the kill. Now it looks like Lucio wanting to start onto the bruiser camp. Hanzo was thinking of rotating in. Looks like it's going to be Diablo. Joe going to soak the top lane. With Zul off the map, that is a lot of opportunity to gain... Some soak here on the side of Tiny Dancers. That said, they are kind of not using their 10 advantage right now. It is Phoenix Decimate over the Warlord's Challenge. Of course, they have the Bless Shield, so they don't need the stun as much. Emerald Wind uh, and Odin. Anymore, I've been seeing Brightwings going back to uh, the Blink Heal for the Synergy at level 13. I've been seeing that a lot. Uh, you go to the Healing Town at 13, it buffs the healing of... Emerald Wind, but, uh, or, uh, 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 Blink Heal. But, uh, that said, with this Zul, with this Diablo, the Emerald Wind could be very valuable. Diablo not picking the APOC 
which is a bit surprising as it's a way to get onto the Brightwing. I mean, if you, if you get a wall bang flip and onto the Brightwing, the Brightwing will die with the APOC. It'll just be stunned out. You know, even won't be able to get the Emerald Wind off. Um, that said, going with the Lightning Breath, trying to control space. A lot of space control with the Durance of Hate, with the Poison Nova, with the Dragon's Arrow, and the Sound Barrier. And that looks like that's the direction they are choosing to go in. Here's the Durance of Hate. Lightning Breath comes out onto the Tychus. Not really a threat to him. There's the Dragon's Arrow, though. Hanzo wants to chase down Feldrop. Overkill was used. On to Diablo, AG Silver, able to get out of that one. And uh, managing to get away is Tiny Dancers. They still have the Odin available. They'll have Decimate as well. Poison Nova still up on the side of Beef Boys. As uh, Tiny Dancers looking to move back in. Looking, there's the Polymorph, finds the Zul. That's one. Can they get another? More killer Mephisto. They're both just trucking out so much damage here. 21 to 24. Z comes in onto the Garrosh just as a maintenance heal. Uh, Durance of Hate, though, is a miss, and it might be Garrosh in a bit of trouble. Ooh! Diablo gets the stun onto Garrosh. Emerald win buying space, though. 30 to 28, and it looks like Tiny Dancers is going to win this second objective. Let's see if they can do more with it this time. Zul, Mephisto, both rotating away to Soak. Now Mephisto coming back for the defense. Level lead for Tiny Dancers. Let's see what they can do with this. This is the Mortar Punisher. Bit unfortunate uh, for Tiny Dancers given their early game pressure. Maybe would have wanted to see a Frozen Punisher, which allows a bit more pushing. That said, they might be able to find the Diablo here once again. There's the Cleanse. But that minigun... Oh, the sound barrier is just in time. No, it's not. Diablo still goes down. And Tyke's minigun getting some value there. Hanzo getting killed actually by the protector there. Uh, Lucio just not able to put out enough healing in time, especially with sound barrier down. Now that has turned into a level and a half lead for Tiny Dancers. On the way to two levels. They may very well hit that soon. And things looking a bit rough for Beef Boys, but definitely looking up for Tiny Dancers. They start to move in onto this siege camp. Mephisto is just going to do some pointless harass. Not going to mean anything, though. And now camp's being grabbed, map being painted blue by Tiny Dancers. They will grab bottom, and it looks like they might want to push in here. Joe rotating down, so they're committing a lot of resources to get this fort. They do have 13 advantage, however, so if they can get this Diablo, or if anyone steps up into that Garrosh, Durance of Hate does hit out onto the Garrosh, cleanse from Brightwing. They want this Garrosh, they put a lot into him, but Brightwing is just going to Z-heal in. And that was two ultimates used for effectively no value. Once again, moving on to the, the Diablo, Unstoppable was used there. Feldroth actually taking a lot of damage from the tower, but they still managed to get the fort down. So two forts down. And remember, that brings some occasional catapult pressure. That said, some soak being lost top in the meantime, as well as their wall. But getting that fort in particular at that time is going to benefit them, as the next Punisher will be the Frozen Punisher, and it will be in the bot lane. If Tiny Dancers wins that, they are very likely taking a keep down. Uh, Frozen Punisher, just very strong at the moment. Oh, we, uh, we have a little uh, Chinese Bush meta. A lot of danger pings coming in. They are, they are staying here a long time with a camp pushing. And uh, Tiny Dancers, I think, wisely chooses to back up. On the cusp of 16, they don't want to get engaged on. Now a good time to step up. Durance of Hate used. Mephisto goes into the back line. Emerald Wind used to make sure Diablo can't come in. And Lucio goes down. Diablo's the next to fall. And now it might be Zul's turn. Ooh, damage coming out onto Garrosh. Gets the self-sustain off of Mephisto to keep himself alive. And Tiny Dancers finds another two kills. Up eight kills to zero. And now with a big opportunity to put a dent in this game. Looking like they're going to take this top bruiser camp. They're going to have double bruiser camp and a catapult. 
I think it might be worth actually pushing in this top. I know the objective is about to start. But they could get a lot of value here. They are actually just going to use that time to start the objective. They have Joe down here with her burning rage to help uh, burn down these minions. And uh, Kel'Thas going to help clear this shrine real quick. So all three forts down for Beef Boys. They find themselves down over two levels. Down a talent tier. And about to face a frozen Punisher in the bot lane. Uh, good call here. Quickly grab your uh, opponent's siege camp to pressure up the mid. Maybe try to get that fort passively while you're pushing very aggressively in the bottom. Joe's actually going to rotate top, so they're not really all inning for this. That means with Zul backing, there's potentially going to be a 4v5 on this defense. Here comes the Odin now. Durance of Hate comes out under Kel'Thas. He has the Mana Attic shield. Going to be okay. Frozen Punisher just taking so much damage so fast. Not really any aggression from Tiny Dancers, recognizing, look, we only have four. But in doing so, I think they were giving up an opportunity to get the first keep of the game. And uh, Punisher did get baited away. It's going to take a lot of damage here. They get the keep down to about half, but they don't actually finish it. And that's catapult pressure they're not going to have in this bot lane. Uh, they are, however, going to be able to rotate mid and grab this fort, me thinks. I don't foresee any, any issues with that. Port down. Now heading to the bottom. Gonna grab this camp, probably grab their siege. Second timer on the bruisers, 122, 152. So there won't be any camps on the map for a while. That said, they're losing the last of their 16 advantage here. They're not really making any aggressive play. They're instead really focused on that race of 20. They are not far. They can very easily soak 20 before the next objective, which is in the top lane. And it will be a reset, so we don't know what Punisher that will be. Um, that said, I think this is a situation where Tiny Dancers very much wants to avoid fights. In fact, we're seeing them being very careful to avoid fights. And instead just look to soak 20 as safely as they can. Uh, they're going to pick up 19 here. But that said, with the lanes pushing because of this occasional cata pressure, that soak's going to be hard to get. And actually, Feldroth getting left behind a bit here. No, has that dash to get away. There's the flip. Diablo isolated. Durance of hate onto the Joanna. There's the lightning breath. Trying to punish, but Diablo is going to go down. Poison Nova comes out. Garrosh going to take a lot of damage, but has the decimate. Getting so much health in Durk and Durk is so low as is Dazed. Living bomb spread. Dazed goes down, and Tiny Dancers gets a third kill off the living bomb. It is Lucio. And now that is not just a chance to get a keep. That is a chance to end the game with those three kills. They're going to go bottom where it's already softened up. And they have a siege camp. Can they end this game? Diablo will be down for 15. They are racing against the clock, but it's a race I think they can win. How's their core damage? It's not amazing. Yeah, no, never mind. They're, I, I thought they are Structure damage would be better, but with the Tychus and the Kel'Thas, it's not great. So instead, they are just going to take that bot keep, which bot keep is great to take. With the next objective top lane, and with no global on the other team, that is a huge uh, keep. You'd much prefer to take that keep to taking top or even mid. Normally, of course, bot lane pretty weak on this map, given that there's only one siege camp, but... Uh, Nonetheless, you can still see a lot of games end through it. Bruiser camp taken by Tiny Dancers. They'll say, look, we have level 20. You don't. Neener, neener. I guess going with that overkill... Uh, getting that armor there. 
Ooh, Kel'Thas getting caught out a bit here. Here comes the Lightning Breath. Z gets interrupted by the Durance. The Burst Heal not able to come in, but that said, Garrosh with the self-sustain is absolutely insane. They catch out Hanzo, and they're going to get him down. Kel'Thas does get isolated to the top. So it's a one-for-one -one trade at the moment, and with the death timers, that absolutely favors Beef Boys. That said, it is still 20-20, 20 to 20, but AG Silver is so low. Oh, Mephisto's going in for the finish. Doesn't find it. Is there a tap available? There is. 18-11. to 11. The situation still favors Tiny Dancers. Two catapults on cool core. Zul has to back. Diablo now may be in a lot of trouble. There's the minigun. Bollymorph. Diablo is still alive. 700 health. Back up over 1,000. Now falling again. And down he finally goes. And that is Souls. Diablo will be back up. But he will not have that big bulky soul shield. And this should be Tiny Dancers getting their fourth protector. This is the arcane protector about to push down the top lane. And bottom lane, two katas once again stacked up. Starting to become a bit desperate here for Beef Boys. Are they going to go for the desperation all in? It looks like that is their plan. Dragon's Arrow finds the stun. Bless Shield stops the engage. Feldroth is low. Gets into the fray. He's going to be able to escape. Silver has just so much self-sustain. Survives for the time being. Even if he drops, they at least got the protector. Liddell is not getting out of this. That said, Kel'Thas getting a big living bomb out. Big flame strike hits a ton. Tribulation is very low here. This fight is not over now. Mephisto trying to go back in. Oh, Dazed is slowed, has the shield, Durance of Hate, might have saved Zul, no it's not going to, Mephisto went down as well. Tiny Dancers, despite being down Joe, now with a big opportunity to end the game, and the core is about to have no shields. I mean, you can actually, if you get one more kill, you walk past keep, you can even walk past keep right now and go core. This core has 74% health, no shields. They don't have the best burn, but they do have the protector. Shield starting to regen. Mephisto and Zul will not be here. Oh, Diablo is very low. They don't get the stun, however. Not sure what the Emerald Wind goal was. But now turning their attention to this 74% core. Shields are down and it is falling. And I think Tiny Dancer is about to take us to a game number three. Indeed, they are. Tiny Dancer comes back. After a close game one, has a dominant, dominant game two. Man, that game, that game one was really back and forth. Could have been won by anyone at any time. That game two was all tiny dancers. Start to finish. Uh, all about that Garrosh Brightwing combo. Worked extremely well. And despite the potential for Diablo to get off big combos... Wasn't really able to do so. Uh, they only secured two kills the entire game. And so, we're going to get to a game three. And I got to tell you, Tiny Dancers is on the front foot right now. Uh, so we're going to see what happens when we come back, back here in a bit. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, for those who were here for game one and stuck around, sorry again. Uh, game two was uh, casted but not streamed as apparently it refused a connection, and I didn't notice. So uh, game two is recorded. It is in the can. Uh, I will upload the full VOD of the full series. That game two, I will tell you, a very dominant showing by Tiny Dancer. 16 to 2 kills. Uh, very much... Controlled the map, won all four uh, objectives. Now we're moving to Hanamura. Bit more of an interesting map as we move into the draft. Tiny Dancers picking this map. Uh, Beef Boys opting to stick with first pick. So all three maps tonight picked by Tiny Dancers. The first uh, two lane map. Hanamura, a map that you tend to play around each other more than through each other. Uh, you want to make sure you're getting your uh, Hanzo, or uh, your Genji, excuse me, your Genji camp. That's what I call it. Or the Ganju, or the Genju camp. Um, you want to get the Genju camp. 
on as much cooldown as you can. Uh, Want to make sure to control those vision points. As, uh, as we move in through the series. Uh, Taronda. Banned out once again. Beef Boys, they're saying, look, we just don't want to play it. We told you we don't want to play against it. And we, we're, we're standing by that. I wonder if they'll ban Chromie again. Tiny Dancers has been banning out D.Va. They're going to ban out Anna first this time. This is a more open map with mobility meaning a lot, so D.Va can lose a lot of value. <clears throat> Relative to other maps. Let's see. Gonna be Garrosh ban. Not a Chromie ban this time. Getting the Garrosh off the map, I thought it was played very well by Silver. Do we see the Diva ban? Or do they rotate in another direction? Maybe take away the Hanzo. They do take away the Hanzo. I think that's a good ban on this map. Hanzo can be uh, rather strong, rather strong indeed. <clears throat> Pardon me, as I am, uh, my throat is not clear. First pick to come with the Hanzo band out. They're actually going to grab Artanis. Artanis, of course, uh, can go amateur opponent and burn down the uh, Genju camp very, very quickly. On the other side, with that Artanis pick, what do they grab? They grab the Greymane and the Brightwing. So, sticking with that Brightwing pick from the last game, they liked it. I mean, I can see why. It worked very well for them. But we have an Uther. Now, that Uther is being played by Durk and Durk, who is the healer. And I will say that solo heal Uther is back. And especially if Tiny Dancers tries to go into single target blow up like they've done before, it's going to be harder unless they get Tychus. If they get Tychus, they can still do it. And that's because Tychus uh, ignores armor even when it's Uther's. Now, Uther does have good burst heals. That can help, but... Joanna banned out. Looks like we might see a tank choke. ETC has not been picked up this series by either team, and it has not been banned either. So perhaps the nerfs to ETC scaring some of the teams away. Perhaps they just don't particularly care to play with that style. In either situation, ETC has been making it through this draft untouched. Gazlo banned out. Uh, Liddell did show up the first game. I don't think it was all that powerful, if I'm honest. Um, at least in the organized play. Certainly if you're able to catch people out with it, uh, the combo is incredibly deadly, but... Felt like it was handled fairly well. That said, Uther doesn't deal with uh, the poke sustain damage very well. And the turrets are certainly going to give that. Tassadar Arthas. To the scourge. Well, Adele typically plays Arth uh, off lane, so that is very probably an off lane Arthas. Imperius going to be grabbed by Tribulation. Let the games begin. And there's Mediv. So Mediv is going to bring some extra support in. But this is a main tank, uh, it's a main tank Imperius with the Uther to follow up. I have a lot of burst damage though with that Cassia. What's the tank going to be? Is it going to be Cow? It's going to be May. Is worth fighting for. May was played, uh... On Alterac Pass by the members of Beef Boys. That said, it was not particularly effective most of the time, if I'm honest. I think uh, that that game one was won by Beef Boys despite the May, not because of it. And that's not to say the May was was played uh, 
super poorly, just that the May was getting annihilated. Um, we'll see what happens here. As we move into the game. Tiny Dancers versus Beef Boys. Game three, this is the decider match. And it's Hanamura, so you know what that means. Get out your resident sleepers, kids. Yay! I hate this fucking map so much I want to die. Map is so terrible. It's so boring. I hate it. Do I have to cast this game? Fuck, I think I do. All right. Well, let's go ahead and let's jump into it. Resonant Sleepers in chat, everyone. As uh, we go to introduce the teams on the left side, Tiny Dancers. going to be Feldroth, not on Tychus, excuse me, on Tassadar. Liddell on Arthas. We got Silver, Silver, Silver on May. Fishing Queen on Greymane. And Materium It's going to be on the default skin Brightwing. Why not Monkey Skin Brightwing? On the right side... Dirk a Dirk is on the Uther. We got uh, Smort Killer on Cassia. Tribulation on Imperius. Up in the top, you have Dazed on Artanis. And, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the name. Forgive me. Uh, Root Beer Guy. I remember that, and I just couldn't remember it. Sorry. Uh, on Medivh. Level 1 Talents. Standard fare relative to, to what these teams picked before. Um, we're getting the Q build out of uh, out of the... Your mic fuzz held up with plumbing tape. Not plumbing tape. It is it is uh, actually designed to be microphone tape. Not really tape. It's it's just tension. It's just like a tension thing. Ooh, great kill on the smart killer. Great run down there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not plumbing tape. This is just tension tape. It's not even really tape. It's not adhesive. But, uh, oh, caster curse. As soon as I look away, someone almost dies again. Fastwall's been on point. And uh, Tiny Dancers have just... You know, they've always been, to me, a team that's done a lot of macro and fight avoidance. They've really turned that on this head in the last game of this series, being very aggressive and very kill-focused. Uh, and looking like they're going to bring that here. Yeah, it's Hanamura. Sorry. But yeah, it's just because the mic is pointed down, and I just don't want it to slide off, because I, I, I jitter and shake a lot. Dirk a Dirk, Smart Killer, taking their turret camp. Both Genjis... Uh, are in the lane. Greymane up top to burn the Genji top. Genji bot. Only Imperius and Medivh defending at the moment. So it might get a bit more damage here. Here comes Cassia and Uther. Ooh, Taswall. Maybe putting Tribulation in a bit of an awkward position here. Medivh, though, using the portal, trying to engage onto the back line onto Feldroth. They do push the uh, team off the Genji for the moment. Or away from the Genji, but... Genji has taken a tower... And a gate. And does some good damage there to Durkadur. Up in the top. Fishing Queen. Gonna go ahead and grab that Vision Camp. Uh, both Vision Camps in the hands of Tiny Dancers at the moment, though. Of course, you primarily want to take them for the experience, and May certainly not gonna be able to do any kind of con contest there. Uh... But a soak advantage definitely favors Tiny Dancers at the moment, up by about half a level. They're going to start working this objective, but keep in mind that once the Genjis are up, you can expect both teams to break off the push to make sure to get their Genjis into the lane. Medivh just keeping vision. Some bot soak clear on the side of Beef Boys. Tiny Dancers pushing top at the moment. Their Genji up in 40. Opponent's Genji up in 35. Big focus onto this top. Looks like we will get a 5v5 here. Both teams ignoring Soak in the bot lane. Looking for this tribute. Medivh drops his first portal down. Imperius goes in for the spear. Doesn't quite land. 
Martana swaps into the back line. Uther taking the Medivh portal. Takes the express route to the back line. Cassia tries to do some damage with the Fen. Doesn't really make much happen. With that Taswall in the way, kind of took an awkward charge angle. And uh, this is going in. This has been channeled successfully by Tiny Dancers. The question now, is Silver going to get out? Medivh, once again, portaling into the back line with the Uther and the Imperius. Oh, but Imperius, he missed the last train home. Oh, no, he's going to have to spend the night in Manhattan. Oh, what hijinks will he get into? Oh, he died? Oh, this isn't a 90s sitcom? Oh. I don't know, that was probably really stupid and didn't make any sense. Whatever. Grimin working on the Genju camp. Uther, Artanis doing their Genju. Task got some bot clear. Tiny Dancers definitely winning the race to 10 at this point. Only down about a level and a half. Uh, from 10. Two levels to go. A little bit more than that on the side of uh, Beef Boy. Oh, Imperius went for that. He might get punished. Right Wing doing a good job hitting these Q center mass to get that additional healing. It's an important skill. And this Genji gets the tower, whereas Genji top has done nothing. Greymane clearing up the turret camp now. Vision camp being taken bottom. I dread the day. I dread the day that I cast this map and someone actually picks Genji. I, I am not looking forward to, to what I'm going to do that day. Please don't encourage me, simple regal. All right. Um, vision camp being contested here in the bottom. They've rotated down. Imperius has gone for this. They have five. And Tiny Dancer is going to have to retreat off this. So a good steal to close that XP gap. Oh, Brightwing used the Z, which meant the portal went straight on top of her. She had nowhere to go because she was still rooted in place. Ice Block only delaying the inevitable. Silver goes down. And Beef Boys get the kills before level 10. That is huge. That closes the XP gap. They're going to hit 10 at about the same time now. That is a big play by Beef Boys and a great portal by Root Beer Guy. Recognizing that the Brightwing... Once you start that Z, you cannot cancel it for any reason. And uh, Brightwing just Zing there for maintenance heals a bit too close to the enemy team. Paying the iron price for it. Uh, is Black Hole Emerald win? So a little bit of a counter synergy there between the two potentially. Avalanche can synergize very well with, uh, with Black Hole as uh, week four play of the game showed. Cursed Bullet on the other side. It is Divine Storm, which Uther's going to maybe try to sync up. Uh, blows the Unstoppable, takes the Cursed Bullet. Protected, by the way, is not going to be enough. Uther goes down. Oh, the Valkyrie does land on the Silver. I'm I'm, I'm just going to say it. I'm very surprised this is a D-Storm. Um, I mean, you have Mei, who has Ice Block. Arthas, who has Icebound Fortitude. They have a lot of single target damage. I'm really, really surprised. That is a D storm. Uh, Leyline Steel, Angelic Armament, Valkyrie, as we saw, and Suppression Pulse. Yeah, I, um. I don't know. I, I, I think, especially with the Artanis, uh, who could benefit from the movement speed as well, just swap into the back line and be fine. I think D Shield would have would have been the play. Oh, but Silver actually may have just been swapped the safety question mark. Um, Brightwing coming in. Valkyrie doesn't catch and hey, all right. All 
Artanis. Uh, with, with, with the great clutch heals on the silver there. So now, Vision Camp taking bot. Level 12 and a half from Tiny Dancers. 12 on the side of Beef Boys, but recognizing they have the opportunity, they're going to push top here. They try to get some damage, but they their internal clock tells them it's time to leave. Medivh might try to look for the portal here, has the ley line. But there's the Emerald win. That's. There, I mean. Yeah, I just. Sil Silver went back in, looked for the avalanche, did not find it. Manages to dodge the. Uh, dodge the swap there. But yeah, I just. I don't see D Storm getting that much value. We'll see. Maybe maybe a god tier D storm gets hit and I'm wrong. I will say, full bias exposed, I'm a healer main, and I've always preferred Divine Shield. I almost have never in my life taken Divine Storm. I just think there's so much playmaking with Divine Shield. Like right there, if Uther has it, well he he'd still be in the same health, because he he had protected by the way. Emerald win, trying to separate out Artanis. He pops the self cleanse! To be able to enter the portal. What an excellent self-saving play there by Dazed, honestly. Uh, but that said... This, uh, this turret is pushing bot. It does go in. And now Tiny Dancers is going to walk away. Having gotten some chunk damage onto this bottom fort. And this should actually take the fort with the wall down. It will actually do some damage to top fort as well. Uh, three more shots to come. Let's see how much damage it does. Almost dead. Uh, invade coming in. They want it. Medivh portal. Great black hole to peel the point. Everyone comes to the portal into the black hole, but they still manage to get through. Liddell is stunned out. Liddell is going to fall. Huge avalanche hits three. Can they get the big follow-up damage? Oh, they almost get Smart Killer. Smart Killer gets out with less than 100 health days. Has the shield to stay alive. Cassia does finally go down. Artanis finds the portal. Can he get away? No. And now if there's a slow there for Tribulation, they can at least definitely walk up and steal this Genji camp. Cursed Bullet comes out. Oh! The Genji got the kill! They aggroed the Genji and it killed the Imperius! What an excellent play there. And that is huge. Tiny Dancers getting to steal the Genshi. They're going to be able to finish up this top fort and start painting this map blue. And this is a big opportunity for Tiny Dancers to get a much-needed win here in Division A East, the division that just continues to be chaotic and unpredictable. I got to tell you, it is a hard division to do uh, tier list for. Hard division to do power rankings. I actually did a topographical sort to try to do power rankings. It did not work. Did not help. What's the timer on their Genji minute? Looks like, what are they doing? They're hanging around bottom. I guess just recognizing, hey, there's nothing to do on the map. We can't soak safely anywhere, so let's just wait until 16 kicks over. Welcome, everyone, to Hanamura. The exciting gameplay of Hanamura cannot be beat. What an amazing map this Hanamura is. <sighs> Does anyone read any good books lately? I'm reading Pete Buttigieg's new book, Trust, and I actually quite like it. It is, uh... It is, it is a great example of all the times we take trust for granted. Like, just driving, we trust everyone around us instinctively follows traffic laws. You know, we trust uh, instinctively, for example, that, that our water is safe to drink. We don't test our water every time we do it. We go to a restaurant, we don't make sure the food is safe. We trust, you know, health inspectors. But we even, we don't even check the health inspection. We trust the restaurant and how it's such a critically important thing and when a a government has been losing trust as the u.s has since the vietnam war 
in many, many ways, it can lead to a skeptical, polarized people uh, as we're seeing. So I actually think it's a great book, whether you, whether you like Pete Buttigieg or not. I think it is a really good bipartisan message about um, the importance of trust and, and what we need to build it. I'm saying all of this because, uh, you know, there's fucking nothing going on because it's Hanamura. And both teams are playing around each other. Alright, we might get some action, or they might give. Either or, really. But I would seriously recommend Trust by Pete Buttigieg. I think it's, it's very good. Ooh, Tribulation getting isolated here. Blows himself unstoppable, trying to get away. Curse Bullet comes in. Oh, the Avalanche did not catch anyone. Silver's been going for that. He had that big Avalanche to help secure the point. But otherwise, nothing worthy of speaking of. But that said, despite that, they managed to once again buy enough space to push in and get the uh, turret to start shooting this keep. And this keep is going to drop here. You would... No, JK. JK, 454. Just, just kidding. All right. Turret camp going to be grabbed. Looks like recognizing they're down a level, we're going to start to see a very, very aggressive beef voice. They're turning on to Liddell. And hey, Divine Storm value. All right. Oh, the ley line value, actually, though. That ley line value is actually huge. Oh, but gets away anyway, and the Valkyrie not able to collect. Great escape there by Silver. Excellent escape by Silver. Aided and abetted by the Brightwing, of course. But, uh, yeah, it was a good pickoff onto the Uther. Both Vision Camps taken, trying to close this XP gap. Still finding themselves down a level. Genshi Camp available in the bot. Five-man push to the bottom. Arthas still not up yet. Have to give this if you're Tiny Dancers, and they do. Wisely so. Uh, they will be able to clean up this Genji fairly easily, however, given that they still have their keep wall standing. Uh, it does do a fair amount of damage to the tower, but... Yeah, they do need to come back and clean up this lane, which they do. Successfully. Very slow play here by uh, Tiny Dancers. They're not really able to soak. I mean, look at this big wave top, though. They have to know, like, look, that has to be cleaned up. We can at least take Vision Camp. Uh, that said, Imperius sees it. He starts to rotate in, as does Mediv. And if they don't push this lane out, this Genji's really not going to get a lot of value. So I would like to see Tiny Dancers get aggressive now that they see that wave clear is there. But, oh, well, the Genji does clean it up rather quickly. Tiny Dancers has won all three objectives. They have a big structure lead. But XP has really evened out because of how much the lanes are pushed out. It has become very hard for Tiny Dancers to soak. Now needing to defend against this Genji in the top lane. Hush coming out from Brightwing could help out. Leyline collects onto Arthas. Avalanche once again... Oh, actually did find Artanis. Rootbeer guy went in too deep, couldn't get back to the portal. And Rootbeer guy has gone down. Now the chase coming out. They polymorph, they get the Uther kill. And, oh, Arthas is on top of Smork. I don't think Smork's getting out of this one. Opportunity to end here now for Tiny Dancers. Three dead. They're going to run it bot, and I think they are going to win themselves the series here. The keep has fallen. They can go straight onto the core. Looks like they want the kill onto the Artanis to make it safer. No, Artanis manages to get away. They have the Greymane, so this is a protect the Greymane situation. And they do, and they're actually going to get the kill onto the Artanis as well. And that will be the game. And Tiny Dancers gets a desperately needed win 
Uh, after a very close game one, looked very, very good in game two and three uh, to close out the series. And AE just continues to be a wild ride that is hard to predict. Uh, and I, you know, I, I, if you asked me to pick this series beforehand, I would have said Beef Boys. Tiny Dancers takes it. And uh, that will be the series, the best of three. So we're going to see if we can do a brief interview. Uh, we'll be right back, everyone. Stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. Keep it here. Volume. That is. Oh, all right. Uh, yep. Sorry, I did have no vo volume. Um, no worries. Sorry about that. So, yeah, I apologize. I've actually been sick as well. I went to the hospital last night. So. Oh no! I'm yeah, sorry to hear that. Um, well, thanks for being here. Yeah. So it's been it's been rough. Um. Anyway, so as you were I saying, uh, so top. Go ahead and just start back over. We're talking about top game one, uh, what what happened after you got the two keeps? Go ahead. Yeah, Materium feeling rough, and he he ended up checking a bush, which was a which was was a uh, a death bush and gank, and uh, they they got the pick and they they carried it really well uh, into just a lot of constant pressure. We were in a position on that map where we were basically playing our game the whole time. It felt like. Uh, we were pretty even on on soak throughout the rest of it. They got a little bit more at the false stad. We were pretty even on structures. They won the first objective, so they got a little bit of lead there. But then we stabilized it real quick, and then ended up two keeps ahead. So we we knew that if we just played back and played safe, that we could just predictably win that game. Um, but with that surprise pick, it just kind of turned into a uh, um, you know a, a thing we couldn't recover from. And I. I was so close. I was on the Rainer and I ran to their core and I had a wave and it was, I felt, I felt like we were almost there, but I obviously I can't out push five people. So. Right. I mean, yeah, you, you still had a chance there, but certainly, um, you know, it, 
I, mean, I think what happened was like the boss had just enough time to regen a, a, or the core had just enough time to start regening health before you got there, which yeah. uh, certainly made a difference there. As it was, it was still extremely close. Uh, game two, no one else got to watch. I apologize for the technical difficulties, everyone. I am not actually feeling well at all, uh, to say the least. Um, but game two, you guys definitely got your feet under you. What was working so well in game two? Well, we had a, a clear plan and we executed it. Uh, one of the things that we like to do is is burn tanks. We play a lot of tanks. Uh, sometimes we even play double tank like that game. So with playing tanks so much, we, we feel like we can exploit their weaknesses really well. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did on for Diablo there. I, I imagine yep. he had a pretty hard game that game we just kept burning him over and over and over again yeah. uh, they did some some things we started actually i feel like uh figuring their team out just a little bit it's one of those things where it kind of takes a little while where you're kind of learning how the other team responds and you're mm -hmm. kind of feeling it out organically kind of figured it out there we knew that um as, if we could get leads and we got advantages then we could take whatever fight we wanted and they they would you know may or may not take the fight probably wouldn't um when they were down but if it was right before we got that advantage they would run at us no matter what so right. by the you saw that kind of adjustment mid uh, that middle game and then by the end of that game we were just backing up every single time we knew that you know we were almost get, uh, about to get a, mm -hmm. a level advantage or a talent tier advantage and then just kind of uh let them crash into us when when we had all the all everything going for us all right one question, and then I'm going to give you shout-outs. Totally. Is Gazlo good in organized play? Obviously, it's doing really well in Storm League right now. It's been buffed to shit. Uh, well, good shit, not bad shit. Uh, but is Gazlo good in organized play after your game tonight, game one? You guys did lose, but you had an opportunity. Your thoughts? Uh, I think he does have a place in organized play, especially... Well, he he's he's overtuned right now, or or overpowered rather. Mm -hmm. So he's got. I think I think that may. I, I don't know after the nerf they give him whether or not this will still be true. Um, but the way yeah, that but he that's can like create, a month and a half away. So yeah, month and a half of yeah. This is this is the meta we're talking ends right now. So yeah, I think he does have a place. He has the ability to uh, put out a lot of damage. So he has kind of a, a pseudo damage bruiser role. Uh, he also has the ability to provide a lot of push pressure, and he has a lot of point control. So a lot of things going for him. I see some really, really great wombo combos also coming out from him. I've been killed uh, like twice today by a, a, a level 20 uh, grav bomb and a silence entomb by a mm -hmm. Leoric combo, which is incredible. Um, so it's it's those things. Um, I, I think he's good against double uh, or or multiple melee uh, enemy teams that he's facing. Uh, right. I think that's what well, really turns that, on. Uh, floor is yours for shout outs. If you want to go ahead and give those. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to you, uh, casting us and, and not feeling well. I hope you feel much better very soon. And we thank you very much for, for casting our game. Uh, shout outs to everyone on my team for, for playing really well. Uh, we've had, uh, a, a new, uh, a, a new division, uh, for learning a new meta, uh, adjusting to everything, and, and we've kind of held it in there throughout all that, which is really nice. And uh, shout out to Beef Boys. They played super well, and it was a great series, uh, all three games. Uh, and then finally, uh, shout out to all our oh, families shit. for uh, uh, yeah. dealing with our you, uh, our shouts of uh, of joy and when you call it when um, misery the, uh, <laughs> throughout the games. Uh, sliced to meat. All right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, we're going <laughs> to... Oh, it called? sorry. Um, hang on. Utter. Utter. Sorry, everyone was hearing my team because I was hopping in chat. Well, I got to go, everyone. So thank you again, Feldroth, for coming in for the interview. Thank you, everyone else. Take care.